What's going on, y'all? It's Gum Gum TCG here, back again with another episode of Deep Dive. I don't know if you checked out last episode, but last episode we went over the new Queen leader, and I figured we'd just keep on rolling with some of these new OPO4 leaders. So today we're going to be talking about everybody's favorite villain, Don Quixote do Flamingo. The man, the myth, the string weaver, whatever you want to call him, he's an evil menace, and I think that he's about to have just as equal of an impact on the uh meta game of the one piece card game as he did in the anime and yeah he's a new leader from the opo4 set and it's going to be a four life leader dual color green purple and he has the effect that end of your turn you get to set two of your dawn cards as active that effect is in insanely strong inherently because it gives you access to free events basically you could spend all 10 of your dawn and then on your opponent's turn you still have two to use for events not to mention if you have other cards that restand your dawn this card this leader can really start to make a big push on your opponent in terms of dawn usage when your opponent only gets 10 dawn per turn this deck basically gets 12 or more and i think that that's insanely strong when paired with certain cards and i've got a whole list of cards here that i want to go over that i think could be good options to try in the green side of this deck in the purple side of this deck and show off a couple different deck lists that i cooked up and show you what you might be seeing in some of these deck lists but before we get into that i do want to shout out dueling guard if you haven't heard of dueling guard they are an amazing company that makes tcg inspired anime accessories for your deck boxes play mats and binders all sorts of things amazing quality and if you haven't checked them out make sure to go check them out i'll leave a link to their website in the description below with code gumgumtcg you can use for a discount at checkout what you haven't heard of dueling guard dueling guard is the best tcg accessory company on the market they have high quality deck boxes binders and play mats made for people who enjoy playing and collecting trading card games in style they have tons of designs based off of fan favorite anime such as One Piece, Bleach, Full Metal Alchemist, and many more. They hit the ground running earlier this year making high quality TCG accessories with beautiful designs that have sold out many times, so if you haven't picked up any of their products, make sure to do so before they sell out again. I have a few deck boxes and playmats from them already and can attest to how they don't cut any corners when it comes to quality, performance, and design. I highly recommend their products and use them every time I play cards. Be sure to check the description below for a link to their site and use code GUMGUMTCG for a discount at checkout. Alright y'all, so let's go ahead and get into this. I already went over the leader effect and I kind of just wanted to go over some cards that you could play in this deck list. Some might not be cards that you've thought about for this deck and a lot of them are going to be more cards that you're going to see in these decks a lot like super often the most popular build of this deck is going to be the film build because it generates so much advantage in the hand and on the field and you can search through your deck just so often that you generate a lot more advantage than your opponent will in any other deck and that paired with all the powerful events that this deck and color combination has access to really is what makes this deck a deadly threat so let's go ahead and start things off here we have the killer blocker two cost two thousand power uh blocker dawn times one on block if you have three or more characters draw a card i don't think you're going to be seeing this in many lists but i did want to throw it out there as a solid option it gets you more advantage there's often times where you're going to have three characters on field when you go monkey d luffy into brook into nami you're going to have those three on field and then you can also just play this killer use that last dawn on the killer and then you have four characters on field two of which being a blocker one that's going to draw you a card and you're going to be left with two dawn at the end of your turn so i just wanted to put it in there as a solid option for a small blocker since the, the uh, Don Quixote family archetype doesn't have a small blocker until OPO5. Next, we're going to look at Law, everybody's favorite blocker for the green colorway. Uh, five cost, 6k power blocker. On play, you can return a character to your hand and play a character with the cost of three or lower from your hand. Uh, just an insane card, gets you insane amounts of value, especially if you play it and then you bounce something like a Nami and then play that Nami again and get another search. This card can really be a great push for uh, a lot of situations and it gets a lot of decks and uh, it's a phenomenal blocker, especially when paired with new cards like Spider's Web that lets you restand stuff. 
So I wanted to throw him in here and talk about him. And if we're going to talk about Law, we have to talk about Kid because eight cost Kid has always been a menace in this card game. It always rears his ugly head back up every time a green deck is relevant, but I don't think you're going to be seeing it very often in this deck simply because there is so much removal in this no new format with blue decks having access to red rock and black decks just being able to ko anything this card doesn't get to live like it did back in the days of opio one and even opio two so I wanted to toss it out here as an option. You know, it's that big magnet that your opponent has to attack. And when you pair it with cards that you have, like the uh, Diamante blocker and the Luffy blocker and any kind of blocker, Law, any blocker paired with this card is just absolutely devastating against your opponent. So I did want to talk about it. Next option we got here is the five cost X Drake. And I just threw it in here because this deck does like to rest cards. You can play a lot of cards that rest your opponent's characters. So then you could also play this X Drake, pop a four or less and get you a nice body on the field. But there's another card that we're gonna be talking about here in a minute. That's one specific reason I put this card in here is because of that card. And it's going to be the Don Quixote Corazon. And we'll get to that here in a minute. Next, we got the three cost, uh, no base effect Usopp from the film archetype. And I just threw this in here because it's an option you can play when you're playing all these film cards. You can search it. It's another 1K in hand. It's another body that you can put out on turn two very easily. And yeah, just a solid option. Next, we got the two cost 2K Chopper. When it attacks with the Dawn under it, you can rest the two or less, but we really just play it for another 2K uh, that you could search off a Nami or Buena Festa. So, that's why it's in here and of course we got nami this is going to be one of the heart and soul pieces of this strategy when you're playing the film build because on play and when attacking you rest it on look at three cards from the top of your deck and reveal a film type card other than nami and add it to your hand and put the rest at the bottom this card searches through your deck so much when you play the film build you get to play so defensively and you get to use nami every turn almost twice a turn and it it's ridiculous if you stick two of these on the field you're searching twice a turn that's insane. And then you have blockers and events to protect it. Free events, Mike. Events that you can use to restand your Nami so they can't attack it again. Events that you can use to restand your Luffy so you have your blocker again. It's really, really powerful. And this is one of the reasons this deck is so strong because you can search every single turn and add another 2K or another event or another Luffy or another anything. And uh, yeah, if you don't have your Namis, they're skyrocketing in price. And if you're wanting to play Dofi, you should probably pick up Nami because this is going to be the best build of this deck. Next, we got Brook. Brook is just here because when you play him, you get to play a film or straw hat crew type character with the cost of three or less from your hand. So a lot of times you'll see people go play Brook, play Nami, use Nami to search. And that's really the play. You want to use Nami and other searchers like Buena Festa to find Brook and Nami in combination and also try to find that Luffy. So then on your seven on turn, you can go Luffy, play Brook, play Nami, search. Uh, I guess that would be your eight on turn, but you know what I'm saying. You want this to be able to play that Nami for free. And speaking of playing cards for free, that's where this Luffy comes in. It's a seven cost, 7K blocker. On play, plays a film or straw hat crew type card with a cost of four or less from your hand you play brook and then you play nami it's really strong and that's one thing that helps this deck really get that advantage push over your opponent next we got a card that i haven't seen in any list but i did want to bring up because it is insanely strong and i think that if you were to put this in a list it will be replaced in the next set by a new doflamingo card it's the four cost 6k yamato and on play it rests as a, it rests a six or less so it's just a good option to rest something and then maybe on the follow-up turn you can try to push with the uh doflamingo or something like that to keep it tapped or I don't know i just wanted to throw it in here because this card is really strong in the wano decks and it's green it could find a home in this deck in some different list so wanted to talk about it next we got the vanilla zoro for cost 6k uh you could play this off a of luffy and yeah it's just a nice beater to have i've seen it in a couple lists not every list but some people do like just having that vanilla beater to help apply extra pressure speaking of extra pressure we got creek six cost 7k on play trash a card ko up to two of your opponents rest of character the cost of four or less if you play this after the turn you play this doflamingo and you have two of their four or less is rested i mean you are 
going crazy. You're winning that game. And then Dawn Times 1, he gains double attack. This card's just phenomenal. It's the blowout card in Kuro, so yeah, it could be a blowout card in this deck as well. I just want to throw it in here. Uh, another option we got are we're going to start looking at the Don Quixote family cards. This is the Viola card, 3 cost 3k. Uh, when opponent attacks, rest 2 and you rest one of your opponent's Dawn. Don't think you're going to put it on the field that often, but you definitely could. It's mostly in here for another searchable 2k. Uh, next, we got one of the heart and soul pieces of this deck. You're going to see this card in every single Do Flamingo list. It's the 2 cost Sugar. Zero power, thousand counter. Opponent's turn, once per turn, when your opponent plays a character card, if your leader is of the Don Quixote Pirates, rest up to one of your opponent's characters, then rest this card. So, a lot of times people are going to try and play around this. However, it's just really strong, especially if you get two of these on the field. You get to rest one of your opponent's characters every single time they play it and then you have one other standing so if they do take that one out you still have another one and on play it also rests a four or less so it's just a menace it's really really disgusting when you pair it with other cards in this archetype like treble or like the do flamingo 10 drop and yeah you're gonna see this in every single list if you're wanting to play dofi you will need four copies of this Next, we got Giola. I don't think you're going to see this in many lists at all, but it is worth talking about. Four cost, 4K, 1,000 counter, opponent attack, rest two, and you rest a four or less. Um, yeah, it's decent. You know, it, it helps go with the theme of resting your opponent's cards, and that's what really, really this deck tries to do, is to rest your opponent's card to put them back a turn while you're moving forward and making bigger pushes. So it's something to talk about. However, I don't think you're gonna see it very often. If I was gonna play like a card like this, I would rather play the Senor Pink because he is three cost 5K. He doesn't have a counter, but when attacking, you can rest one. And if your, if your leader has the Don Quixote Pirates type, rest an opponent's character with the cost of four or less. Then at the end of the turn, you get to set an extra Dawn active. So you're left with three extra Dawn at the end of the turn. I would definitely rather play this over Giola, but um, you're not gonna see a lot of these Don Quixote Pirates in the most competitive builds of this list. Like I said, the most competitive build is going to be that film list. That's what you're gonna be seeing topping regionals and stuff. Who knows? You might see some of these cards in a topping list and then everybody's gonna start playing them but more likely than not you're gonna see the film list more than a don quixote pirates list but i do think senor pink is very strong and another very strong card is diamante a lot of people aren't playing this card and i really think that it should be played uh it's five cost 6k thousand counter it's a blocker and then dawn times one at the end of turn if you have two or more active dawn you get to set him as active so this can just be really strong it's almost like the seven cost kid blocker because you just have to put a dawn on him and at the end of the turn you get to set him as active and use him as a blocker on the next turn after attacking with him so really strong and when you're playing the dofi leader you're always going to have that extra two dawn active at the end of the turn so he's always going to stand back up if he has a dawn on next we got the three cost dellinger four thousand power thousand counter end of your turn set an extra dawn is active so this gets you to three extra dawn a turn instead of just two this card i think is incredibly powerful and slept on because you can just pump out a couple of these early game and leave them on the field and you're left with so much extra dawn at the end of the turn you can use so many events on your opponent's turn it's almost impossible to kill you Next, we got Treble, 6 cost 6k, on play, KO up to one of your opponent's rested characters with cost of fire or less. Uh, no counter, though, but when your opponent attacks, you can rest 2, and you set up to one of your opponent's characters with the cost of 4 or less as rested. You get to rest at 4 or less when they attack. So, it's kind of like Senor Pink, but just a bigger body, and it pops something on play. I think this card's also phenomenal, especially if you're wanting to play a pure build. You're definitely going to want to max out on Trebles and Diamantes, so... Be on the lookout for this card. This card could be a menace. Uh, speaking, speaking of menace, we have the 10 cost, 10,000 power Do Flamingo. This is the actual menace of the deck. This is the reason, in my opinion, that this deck wins. This card feels like a win button and it's just because of how strong it is. So when you're playing against this deck, you're going to have to watch out for this one. On play, you get to choose a total of three characters or leaders that are rested and they do not refresh next turn 
the wording on this one on the sim is a little weird just because of the translation but what the effect does is if you get to select three of your opponent's rested characters or leaders and they do not refresh next turn it's almost like a turn skip and that's why this card's so strong because you get to play this and then you're also left with two dawn to defend yourself with and you basically skip their turn they don't get to attack with their leader and their big bodies can stay rested this card is a blowout. It's insanely powerful, and you're going to see this in every single list. So definitely be out on the watch for this card to hit the field, because if you're going swinging at them with all your characters and they're at 10 Dawn, you best believe they're playing this next turn, and they're going to basically turn skip you. Next, we got Baby 5. Basically just another 2K. It's a one cost, 1,000 power. End of your turn, you can trash it, set 2 Dawn active. You're never going to put this on the field. It's just another searchable 2K. Next, we got Mach Vice. Uh, four cost, 5K, 1,000 counter. On play, if your leader is Don Quixote Pirates, rest up to one of your opponent's five cost or lower characters. Then at the end of your turn, you get to set a Dawn as active. Uh, I don't think you're going to see this card very often. Just wanted to throw it out there. Another option for you. One that I do like and I don't see as often as I would. I, I love this card. I think this card is really strong. It's the four cost 5k thousand counter Lao G. And at the end of your turn, if you have three or more Dawn active, you get to KO up to one of your opponent's rested characters with the cost of three or less. So if you are playing this pure Don Quixote Pirates build, you're oftentimes going to be resting your opponent's cards with attacks. And then you're going to have something like Dellinger on the field to restand an extra Dawn. And then if you have Lao G on the field, you're going to get to KO that rested card. So I think it's strong, but like I said, there are stronger options. That's why you don't see this in many lists. Next, we got another one of my favorite cards that I wish I saw in more lists, and this is what I was talking about earlier. This is the Don Quixote Rosinate, 8 cost, 8,000 power, no counter. Opponent's turn, if this character is rested, your active characters with an original cost of 5 cannot be KO'd by effects. So he protects your Diamantes as well as Law as well as Extract from being popped by card effects. And on play, you can rest him and play a green character with the cost of five from your hand. So you can play this, rest it, play out Diamante or Law or X Drake, and they're all protected the next turn from being KO'd by, let's say, a Sakazuki or something like that. I think this card's really strong, and it definitely has a home in the Isho deck, but does it have a home in this deck? Not really sure just yet. I think we're going to have to see some testing with it and see if people are open to playing this card if you are open to playing it you'd probably only play two copies of it something like that it is searchable but this deck honestly doesn't have a lot of searchability until opo5 next we got the two cost 3k bartolomeo uh if you don't have this card and you're wanting to play the film version you might want to try and pick it up because this card is really strong a uh, thousand counter end of your turn you can rest this character and set one of your film type characters other than this one as active so basically it allows you to swing with your monkey d luffy and then also restand him at the end of the turn it's very strong this card is just price locked behind a regional price tag you know it's a regional promo so if you're not going to regionals and you don't get to open those packs you're gonna have to pay a premium for this card don't see it in every list but uh you do see it in a lot of the kid film lists However, I haven't seen it in many of these dope lists because we do have other ways to restand cards. It is a good option though. Another good option, always in green decks, is a one cost blocker beige. Uh, just wanted to put them in here just in case you want some extra protection. Another one is going to be the one cost searcher jewelry bonnie. You know, you get to search for some supernovas and we're going to talk about a couple that you can be searching here in just a second. Next, we got the two cost scratchman of poo. Uh, Effect doesn't really matter. Dawn times one in an attacking. Rest up to one of your opponent's Dawn cards. We really just play him for a 2k. And you play it when you play Bonnie. Just so that you can search it. Next we got the 5 cost 6k Restand Law. On play set a Supernova or Heart Pirate type rested characters at the cost of 5 or less as active. I'm not going to see this very often in the Don Quixote family list. I mean, to be honest, it, it's just something I wanted to throw in here. You know, if you are playing a Supernova heavy build, you might want to include this. People are playing this a lot in Law, and it's very strong. It can make for some very, very devastating lethal pushes. Speaking of that, we got... Basil Hawkins, another one of those strong supernova cards. Five cost 6k, dawn times one, once per turn on your turn. This character battles an opponent's character, set this card as active. Basically just gets to give you two free swings a turn, really strong. 
and uh, I could see it played if you are playing that Supernova Heavy Package. You know, you're playing basically a kid list with a couple extra goodies in there. Next, we got another card you'd see in a kid list and I wanted to throw in here because I think it's another good option for if you're not playing a film package. It's basically another Diamante, just a little bigger. 7 cost, 7k, blocker kid. You know, Dawn Times 1, end of your turn, set this card as active. Simple as that. Big beater that becomes a blocker. Next, we're going to move into some purple cards, and I apologize if I am moving through this stuff really fast. Like I said, we just have a lot to talk about, so I wanted to get through this as fast as I could so I could show off some of these deck lists. A um, couple of these cards, I just wanted to toss in here because I think they're interesting and could make for some interesting strategies with this color combination. We haven't seen this color combination up until this point, so I wanted to talk about a couple different things you could do with it, and one of those things being purple's Dawn Ramp ability. You could play things like the ulti. On play, rest a Dawn, add a Dawn from your Dawn deck and rest it. Or you could play Sasuke. It's a 2k and also Dawn times one when attacking, trash a card from your hand, add a Dawn from your Dawn deck and rest it. Uh, another one is going to be the four cost Basil Hawkins. On play, add a Dawn card from your Dawn deck and rest it. So these are just a couple options I found that you could play to help ramp some Dawn. You know, if you get that extra advantage on your opponent, sometimes it's hard for them to come back from that. Uh, next, we got the 5 cost 5k X Drake on play, Dawn minus 1. Your opponent trashes a card from their hand. Uh, just wanted to put this as an option. It is a 2k that's very popular in purple decks, especially because it also has that playability to make your opponent trash a card. In a simplified game state, that can be really devastating, and I hope you close out a win. Next, we're going to talk about a couple cards that I thought could be interesting for a uh, purple strategy with this leader, and that's going to be a couple Impel Down cards. One of them being Sadie. She's a 2k counter, 3 cost, 3k. On play, plays a Jailer Beast type card from your hand. So I wanted to throw this in here just because I've got a couple more Impel Down cards. And I'm going to show you a list using some of these that I think, I mean, this card's just incredibly strong. You get to play a free blocker from your hand. There are a couple more Jailer Beasts that I did not include in here. I could, but in my opinion, I think you just want to play the Mini Koala just to get an extra body and block Brawn Field. So you could play things like the Minotaur, you could play things like the Minnow Rhinoceros or the Minnow Zebra, but I think that the Koala is the best one when talking about this leader. Um, next we got the Shiki. This is going to be a film card. It's a vanilla. It does have a trigger to play this card, however you'd never be doing that. It's mainly because it's a searchable purple film card. You can easily grab it off a of Nami or a Buena Festa. Next, we got Douglas Bullet, 5 cost, 6k, Thousand Counter. On play, Dawn minus 1, rest up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of 4 or less. So, this is going back to the resting aspect of the rest of the Don Quixote Pirates. This is another one of those searchable options you could toss into a film list just to help apply some extra pressure against your opponent, rest something, and get a decent body out there. Next, we got the 2 cost, 2k Domino Blocker for the Impel Down. Just a simple little blocker you can search off of the next card, Hannibal. Hannibal's a one cost 2k, thousand counter, uh, impel down searcher basically. On play, looks at five cards from the top of your deck, reveals up to one purple impel down type card other than this one and adds it to your hand, puts the rest at the bottom. So it helps you search for some of these cards like Sadie, Domino, Magellan, Mina Koala, and uh, yeah, let's talk about Magellan next. This is one of the strategies I wanted to try and build a deck based around, and I'm calling it the Dawn minus Quixote deck because you're going to be trying to go up in Dawn and put your opponent back on Dawn at the same time using cards like Magellan and a couple other purple event cards that are going to ramp Dawn for you. So I wanted to throw this in here because I think Magellan's a really strong mid-range tempo card for purple decks. You know, 5 cost 6k, the effect is generic and it's on play, Dawn minus 1, makes your opponent put a Dawn back. And then on your opponent's turn, when this character's KO'd, your opponent puts two of their Dawn back. So it makes it really hard for them to want to remove this card. Like I said, there is a lot of good removal in this format, like Red Rock, 3000 Worlds, things like that. So if you are going against a blue deck, you're going to have a hard time putting this body on the field and letting it stick. But against most other decks, they're going to leave this body on the field because they don't want to go back. Oh, I deleted him. <laughs> they're not going to want to go back on their Dawn line. Next, we got Mina Koala. Like I said earlier, it's just a blocker to play off of Sadie. You could search off a of Hanyable, and I think it's an interesting tech that you could put in here if you're playing an impel down strategy. 
Next, we got the Uta. It's another searchable film card for the purple colorway. Eight cost, 8,000 power. On play, Dawn minus two. Your leader and all of your characters gain 1,000 power until the start of your next turn. I haven't seen this in many lists at all ever since the card came out, but it is an option. You know, it gives that big boost to all your characters and it's searchable. I think that it could see some play somewhere, sometime, but not in my list. <laughs> Next, we got the new Miss All Sunday, five cost 5K character on play adds a rested dawn to your cost area and then man these translations are a little strange on play it gives you a new rested dawn and then if you have six or more dawn you draw a card so you play it on your five dawn curve and you get an extra dawn and you get to draw a card and you get a body so dc card i could see it played in most purple decks honestly it just gives you a free ramp and a free draw next we got the nine cost 10k kaido with rush uh, everybody knows and loves him crazy card dawn minus five ko is a character with a cost of six or less and then this character gains rush really a powerhouse card don't think you're going to see it in this kind of deck list very often it is an option though most of the time you're going to want to save all your dawn for the don quixote do flamingo 10 drop but who knows you could see this in a list next we got queen a uh, really strong purple blocker one of the strongest if not the strongest for the purple colors uh five cost 6k blocker Dawn minus one on play. You draw two cards and trash one. Just a little hand cycle. Next, we got Jack. It's another one of those Dawn ramping cards. On play, you could trash a card from your hand. It adds a Dawn from your Dawn deck and set it as active. Just wanted to throw it in here. If you are trying to play a ramp build, Jack is a great option. Next, we got Who's Who. On play, Dawn minus one. KO is one of your opponent's characters with a cost of three or less. Perfect for getting rid of bodies and stuff like that. If you are playing a Dawn ramp strategy, going minus one in the early stages is not a problem at all. Also has a trigger to play it, so it could be really good pulling this card out of life. Next, we've got the four cost 5k Ain. Ain? I don't know how to say this. On play, add a Dawn from your Dawn deck and rest it. Searchable through the film archetype and just wanted to throw it in here as an option to help you ramp I haven't seen it myself but i do think it is a cool option if you're trying to ramp next we got the two cost 3k and just a blocker small little blocker for this archetype i've seen this in a few lists and it is fucking nasty man this deck having access to small searchable blockers is a problem and i think that you're going to see this in some list but not all so be on the lookout for this one that you are going to see in every list that plays film cards is the four cost 5k uta it's a blocker on block on minus one and rest up to one of your opponent's characters with the cost of five or less this card is a killer it's so strong you have to have a good form of removal for this card and if you don't one of your characters is getting rested it really sucks to play against this card so if you're not playing cards that can remove a card without koing it uh, well, I guess you don't have to not KO this. Without attacking, then you need to find something to put in your deck list because this card will mess you up and then your opponent will get to keep that card rested after the next turn or kill it next turn. This card's very strong. Another one I've been seeing in all the film lists is the Guild to Soro. 5 cost 6k, film, searchable. When attacking, Dawn minus 2, draw 2 cards. This is another one of those cards that you, they use to gain an absurd amount of advantage because you just get to draw two it's literally pot of greed it's sanji's pilaf you just get to draw two card man it's stupid and it's 6k they can restand it it's dumb it's really strong and you're gonna have to try and find a way to remove this before they can use that effect another one that i haven't seen in list because there's just better options is the douglas bullet film card i think this card is insanely strong however like i said there's just better options and you want to save your dawn for something else but i think it is really strong you it's eight cost 10k activate main once per turn dawn minus four you get to rest two of your opponent's characters with a cost of six or less then this character gains double attack during this turn so say on the turn that you drop your 10 cost Doflamingo, you also have this on the field already. You get to rest the other two characters that you didn't get to keep rested. Like say they left some blockers up. Then you also have a 10k body that has double attack. That is devastating. And when you pair it with the film archetype, this card being searchable, I could really see this card being a menace. 
playing maybe one of it because you search so hard through your film deck, you'll be able to find that one of. Next, we got Buena Festa. This is the other searcher for the film tar. This is the other searcher for the film cards. One cost, zero power, 2k counter. That's huge for a searcher. On play, looks at five cards from the top of your deck, reveals up to one film type card other than Buena Festa, and add it to your hand. Then place the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order. So you can go Nami, search this, play this, search Nami. It's stupid, man. This It's ridiculous for this deck to have two of the... It's ridiculous for this deck to have two different searchers for the entire deck. And yeah, this card's crazy because it's also a 2k. So if you don't want to search again, you can just hold it and use it for power. Now let's get into some events. We do have quite a few events to talk about. One is Demon Face. Six cost green event, main KO up to one of your... Six cost green event, main KO up to two of your opponent's rest of characters with a cost of five or less. Uh, I think it's interesting. I don't think it's amazing, but... I mean, if you play that 10 drop Dofi and you rest two fiber lesses next turn when they when they pass, you have this in hand, you just get to pop them. It's a possibility, but I don't think it's a great option. Did want to talk about it though. Next, we got the one cost Paradise Waterfall. This card's insane. Counter gives up to 2k to one of your leaders or characters and then set one of your characters as active. Really strong when paired with a blocker like Luffy or Kid and you just get to restand it. Next, we got Punk Gibson. You're going to see this in most of the lists here. This card's just one of the best green events, if not the best one. Uh, I think it's rivaled right now by Spider's Web. They're both insanely strong. Two cost, counter for 4,000, then rest up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of 4 or less, and the trigger just rests any character. Insanely powerful card. This is an instant 4 of in almost every single Dofi list, if you can fit it. Next, we got Diable Jambi Venison Shoot. Two cost of it main KO up to one of your opponent's resty characters with a cost of four or less. So if you pair this with cards like Senior Pink, rest one of them characters, and then you get to play this and pop it, could be really strong. Next, we got the Paradise Totska, just another one of those resting events. Like I said, the archetype likes to rest cards. Why not play more cards to rest cards? Um, I feel like Exhibit right now. Yo, we gave you cards to rest cards because your cards rest cards, so we thought you could rest cards. Uh, one cost, main, rest of four or less. Uh, trigger KO up to one of your opponent's rest of characters with the cost of four or less. I think it's really strong. I think the thing holding it back in this archetype is it's not searchable. However, I think it is very strong. It's searchable if you play Momonosuke, but I wouldn't be playing that in this list. That's why I didn't include any of the Wano cards, but it is another option. Next, we got the instant four of spider web. Two cost event, counter up to one of your leaders or characters, gains 4,000 power, then restains one of your characters as active. It is better, it is better paradise waterfall. And yeah, it's insanely strong. The trigger's super strong too. It gives one of your leaders 2,000 power for the entire turn. Next, we got the searcher for the Don Quixote family archetype. Uh, like I said, we do get a better searcher in the next set, but for now, it is a counter event, which feels insanely strange to me. It's one cost counter. Look at five cards from the top of your deck. Reveals up to one Don Quixote pirates type card and adds it to your hand and puts the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order. Uh, I think this would have been better if it was main slash counter, but I guess they had to balance this archetype somehow. Yeah, I think it's a solid option. If you're trying to search for more of those Don Quixote pirates, you definitely want to play this. Next, we got Flap Thread. Uh, I think this is called something else in the actual translation, but we got Flap Thread. Two cost event counter. If your leader is the Don Quixote pirates, up to one of your leaders or characters gains 2000 power for the rest of the turn. This card's really strong. You can use it on your leader and then it instantly becomes 7k and makes your opponent have to use extra Dawn to attack. Next, we got the five cost weaklings can't choose the way they die. This <laughs> this card's name is actually even longer in the TCG translation, but I wanted to throw this in here because it is a cool card. I don't think you're going to see it at all, but it was crazy strong in the pre-release events. It says main or counter rest up to one of your opponent's leaders or characters, then KO up to one of your opponent's rested six cost or lower characters. Uh, trigger sets up to five of your dawn as active. I think this card is, like I said, really cool. However, I think there are just way better cards you could play for five dawn. 
Next, we got Scalpel. Uh, I haven't seen this in any list yet, but I think it's really strong. One cost counter, your leader or one of your characters gains 2,000 power during this battle, then you just restand that Dawn you paid. Uh, it's really strong. I think it's really good. And then next we have the counterpart, which is Repel. It does the same thing, but for two Dawn, and it gives 4,000 power, and then sets one Dawn as active. So I think these are strong. You could see one or the other in a deck list, maybe, just because it does restand that Dawn and gives you that extra power. So who knows? You might see it. Next, we got Straw Sword, two cost main event, rest up to one of your opponent's characters, any character, and then Trigger plays a supernova type character or stage card with a cost of two or less from your hand. Uh, I don't know about it. What stage card is there for supernovas? Interesting. I don't know. Anyway, just another one of those resting events. I thought it'd be cool to throw it in here. You never know what people are going to play and what kind of cards you're going to have to go against. This could be a really strong tech for the mirror match, resting some of those big blockers. Next, we got Sheep's Horn. Uh, this is another resting counter event. Actually, it's a main event. Dawn minus one, rest up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of six or less. Uh, honestly, I don't know why you would play this over something like the Straw Sword or the Paradise Totska because they are just better inherently, but it is an option. Next, we got Thunder Bagua. You are going to see this in a lot of lists. It's two cost, counter, your leader or character gains 4,000 power. Then if you have two or less life cards, add a Dawn from your Dawn deck and rest it. Really strong, especially if you are using some Dawn minus events, this could get you back on track. Next, we got Hell's Judgment, and I haven't seen this in many lists, and I don't know why. I think this is one of the strongest purple events in the game, and it's going to pop up somewhere, I promise it. Two cost event, counter Dawn minus one, gives two of your opponent's leader or characters minus 3,000 power during this turn, and the trigger makes your opponent shuffle a Dawn back if they have six or more Dawn. So, really strong. I think you could definitely play this in replacement of something like Thunder Bagua and get a little more value out of your counter. Next, we got Hydra. Dawn minus one gives up to one of your opponent's characters minus 3k power during this turn. Has the same trigger as Hell's Judgment, but it's like a mini reverse radical beam. But it's like a mini reverse guard point. You just have to go Dawn minus one for it, which I don't think matters in this deck, really. You know, if you're going Dawn minus one on your opponent's turn, you're just getting your Dawn back next turn. The Dawn you have standing are free anyway. Yeah, I, I don't think it matters too much in this deck, and you do have other ways to ramp, like I talked about if you're playing a purple heavy list. Next, we got Venom Road. This just ramps the Dawn, you know. I don't think it's great, but I didn't want to throw it in here. Next, we got Gum Gum Jet Gatling. This card's been popping up in purple lists a lot lately because it's a zero-cost event, so it's very hard for you to know if your opponent has it or not, and especially if you only have two Dawn active and you have another event you want to use, you can use this one for free by trashing a card. It gives a leader or character 3k power, and its trigger ramps you a Dawn as active. I think it is a solid option for this deck, and you could definitely squeeze it in there somehow. Next, we got three cost nose fancy cannon. Counter gives one of your leaders or characters 6k power for this battle. Then if your life's at two or less, you get to rest a dawn. So I think it's a solid option, but most of the time you're only going to have two dawn active. So you're probably not going to see it. This is going to be something you're going to find more in the purple yellow croc list. Next, we got blast breath. This card's insanely strong for the cost of one dawn and going minus one. Uh, your leader or character gains 4,000 power this battle. Really strong, and I could definitely see it in any list. Next, we got two different film events. I just wanted to talk about these because they are searchable with the film cards. This is the Lion's Threat. Uh, three cost, Dawn minus two. It's main. Dawn minus two. KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of five or less. Ah. Uh, it's all right. I just wanted to talk about it because it's searchable. I think the other option is a little better if you are wanting to play a film event, and that's going to be the Union Armando. It's two cost, it's a counter, and up to one of your film type leaders or characters gains 4,000 power during this battle. If that card is a character, that character cannot be KO'd during this turn. So I think it's very strong when you pair it with the film Luffy. And I could definitely see this in a deck list, especially because it doesn't go Dawn minus. And its trigger also ramps you a Dawn active. So definitely could see it played in a list or two. 
The next we have the Impel Down stage. Like I said, this is this is really for if you are playing one of those Impel Down lists. Like I said, Impel Down lists aren't popular. It's going to be one of those gimmicky kind of lists that I just threw together just to show you all maybe something a little different you could do with this leader. And uh, yeah, this is just your stage card that gets you searching through the deck to help you find some more of your Impel Down cards. But that's enough talking about these cards. Like I said, we had a lot to go over. So I want to show you a couple deck lists really quick and... I want to start with the most competitive, then one that I think is going to be right behind it, and then one that's going to be a little more gimmicky and a little more fun. So let's take a look at those. All right, y'all. So this is a Don Quixote Do Flamingo film type list. This is going to be pretty standard for what you're going to see for this kind of deck list if you're seeing a film list. Uh, this is what I would play if I was playing this deck list. Uh, you're probably not going to see a Diamante in many of these lists or Hell's Judgment, but I personally like these cards and I think they will catch people off guard. I have seen Diamante in a couple lists, but most don't play it and I haven't really seen Hell's Judgment popping up around there either. So. Yeah, like I said, it's mostly film cards other than a couple Don Quixote pirate cards and a couple events. But for the film cards, we got four Chopper, four Nami, four Brook, four Luffy. Then we got four Shiki, four Uta, two Tesoro, and four Buena Festa. Uh, Buena Festa and Nami, you're going to be able to search all of those cards in this deck. And that's really what gives this deck that power. Like I said, this is going to be the more typical kind of list you're going to see people playing with this build. You're going to see people playing with this leader. And then, of course, they're going to be running four Sugar as well as four Do Flamingo. You got to find them and not playing a search card for your Don Quixote Pirates. You definitely want to max out so that you can see those. And then you're always going to see them playing Pump Gibson as well as Spider Web. And then I think if they are playing a third event, it's really preference. A lot of people are liking Bagua just because it could ramp you if you are going Don Minus with your Guild to Soro or your Uta. So... Like I said, I'm just personally a fan of Hell's Judgment. Being able to hit two cards for 3k, in my opinion, is very strong. And I also like Diamante just because it is like a mini kit blocker. And it's always going to stand back up and you're always going to be able to swing 7k with it. So I wanted to throw that in here. And yeah, like I said, that's going to be your standard kind of list for this deck. Um, if you're testing out a film Dofi list, definitely let me know what you're playing down in the comments below. And I wanted to say, if you're not subscribed yet, please make sure to subscribe. We are on the road to 500 subscribers. We just hit 250, so we're halfway there. And I want to thank every single one of you for watching and subscribing. And uh, yeah, like I said, make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know what you're playing in your film Dofi list. So uh, let's go ahead and get a look at the next deck list. It's going to be a Don Quixote Pirates list. All right, y'all. So I got this next list pulled up here and I just cooked this up in a few minutes. I uh, really wanted to focus heavy on the Don Quixote Pirates list. Like I said, the last list is going to be more competitive and what you're going to be seeing a lot more often. This is going to be a little bit more fun. I'll probably build something like this just to take the locals to have a good time with. I didn't put any purple cards in here just because I think the green cards can carry themselves, especially when paired with this leader effect and these counter events. But uh, we are playing three law and then we are playing the three core zone. So, like I said, I like this card a lot. It can play Diamante or Law for free and also protects them from destruction. Then we're going to be playing four of the three cost Viola as a 2k counter. We're going to be playing four Sugar, three Senor Pink. I think this is a really strong beater in this deck list. Uh, then we're going to be playing four Diamante, three Dellinger to get that extra Dawn at the end of the turn, four Treble to help push and pop cards. We're going to be playing four Do Flamingo. Like I said, four do flamingo and four sugar are going to be standard in every single list and then we're also playing four baby five as our other 2k counter we got two lao g uh i think this card is strong but don't want to see it all the time we are playing the three rosanantes and we are playing four punk gibson four spiderweb and then four don quixote family just so that we can keep searching if we do pop a dellinger out on the field we're going to be having three dawn at the end of the turn so that leaves us one for our family searcher and then two for a counter event so yeah like i said this is going to be more of one of your fun list something to play if you're trying to stick true to that do flamingo don quixote pirates whatever and yeah definitely let me know how y'all feel about this list if you're running more of a pure build comment down below and let me know what you're playing next list we're going to be the next list we're going to take a look at here is going to be an impel down list something that i cooked up really fast like i said just as another weird option something a little more gimmicky and a little more fun and here it is. Like I said, it's an impel down list, and I really wanted to try and 
put your opponent on extra pressure with the Magellan and cards like Sadie playing Amina Koala for free and yeah really trying to take a and really trying to capitalize on some of these searchers and strong powerful events so let's take a look at what we got like i said we got the four and four sugar and doflamingo we are also playing four diamante just as an extra blocker and an extra beater uh we are playing four of the 2k counter sadie that also lets you play mina koala so you gotta have a 2k in here somewhere you know we don't have too many other ones actually we don't have any other 2ks but we are playing a handful of events and blockers so we'll be all right we got four of the two cards domino blocker searchable so definitely want to toss it in here especially when paired with cards like Hannibal and impel down you're going to be able to search for this and sadie whenever you want every single turn Hannibal, like i said the searcher for the archetype and then we got the magellan we want to be able to see this so we can start your opponent off on that bad foot and really put them behind in dawn and make them not want to get this off the board and we can protect it with things like mina koala and uta both really strong for cost blockers the mini koala on ko effect is never going to go off for you because your leader does not have the impel down type however you do get to play for free off of sadie and playing two bodies for the cost of one is always really strong next we got spider's web you got to play this card so you can restand your blockers and just keep yourself on that defensive and just keep yourself on the defensive side we are playing hell's judgment because it's searchable as well as hydra because it's searchable it gives it's just hell's judgment for one basically so you just want to play two of it in here because most of the time you're going to be playing hell's judgment over this but if you are lacking or you do need just one dawn there you go hydra and then we do have the impel downstage card like i said this is just something i threw together pretty quick just to show you the versatility of the green purple leader if you are toying around with a list like this or maybe an animal kingdom list that ramps on something like that definitely let me know down in the comments below i want to see it and post it in the discord wait you're not in the discord join the discord man we got a whole Wait, you're not in the Discord? Definitely be sure to join the Discord. We have a Discord server with a whole bunch of people in it right now. I'll leave a link to it down in the comments below. So if you want to join that and share your deck list or talk about deck lists or anything, definitely be sure to join. Once we hit 100 Discord members, I'm going to be running a free box tournament. So make sure you get in there before we hit 100 members so that you can get the chance to win a free box of the latest set. But yeah, I really appreciate y'all watching this video. I want to know your thoughts on some of these lists. I want to know your thoughts on what you're playing and what this leader is for you. And if this is going to be your main leader for this set, let me know. I really like to know what my subscribers are playing. And if you're not a subscriber, make sure to subscribe. It takes five seconds. Um, but yeah, be on the lookout for the next episode of Deep Dive. We're going to take another look at another new leader. So if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe, like the video, comment down below. If you haven't checked me out on social media or Twitch, check me out on those. I'll leave those all in the description, as well as a link to Dueling Guard. If you haven't checked them out, go check out their website. They got some sweet new products launching, and make sure to use code GUMGUMTCG for a discount at checkout. I really appreciate every single one of you watching, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.